On November 3rd, 2005, Teresa Halbach was reported missing by her parents. Halbach, who had not been seen since October 31st, was said to have visited the Avery Salvage Yard in Manitowoc County on October 31st, 2005. On November 10th, following the discovery of her Toyota RAV4 partially concealed on the Avery property, Calumet County Sheriff Jerry Pagel conducted a search and found the charred remains of Halbach. Her cell phone, license plates, and car keys were also recovered. Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey's uncle, was arrested on November 15th after investigators found Avery's blood in Halbach's vehicle. At the time, Dassey was a 16-year-old sophomore at Michicot High School. With an IQ in the borderline deficient range, Dassey was enrolled in special education classes. Dassey was described as a quiet, introverted young man with an interest in wrestling, animals, and video games. During the investigation, Dassey, who was also Avery's alibi, underwent a series of interrogations without counsel or parent present, in which investigators made false promises to Dassey using approved interrogation techniques. Brendan was interrogated on four occasions over a 48-hour period, including three times in a 24-hour time frame under the same conditions. Dassey was interrogated via the Reed technique, which was developed to permit and encourage law enforcement officers to use tactics that pressure suspects to confess. Dassey had been clinically evaluated as being highly suggestible, which makes a suspect more compliant and can ultimately lead to improper interrogation outcomes such as false confessions. This is Brendan Dassey's last interrogation. since we last talked now, which was Monday, and you had a chance to reflect and breathe, I imagine, just, and we, um, I got more, okay. and, uh, I kind of call it, it's a sense the briefing in a way, you know, just let you talk to us a little, and, um, and and we've had also a chance for two days now to look at what you said and, and listen to the to tapes a little and stuff like that. And you know we look at that and we say, well, you know, Brendan gave us honestly gave us this information, this information, that information. Maybe I'll call them dots or whatever. And some of the dots, when we look at it, say, well. I think we need some matching up here, just a little tightening up or something. We, we feel that that maybe, I think Mark and I both feel that maybe there's some, some more that you could tell us um, that you may have held back for whatever reasons. And I don't want to assure you that Mark and I both are in your corner, we're on your side. And you did tell us yourself that one of the reasons you hadn't come forward yet was because you were afraid, you were scared, and, and one of the reasons you were scared was that you would be implicated in this, or people would say that you helped or did this, mm -hmm. okay, and that you might get arrested and stuff like that, okay, and we understand that. One of the best ways to, to, to prove to us, or more importantly, you know, the courts and stuff, is that you tell the whole truth. Don't leave anything out, don't make anything up because you're trying to cover something up a little. Um, and even if those statements are against your own interest, you know what I mean? That, that makes you, it may, might make you look a little bad or make you look like you were more involved than you want to be uh, looked at. Um, it's hard to do, 
but it's good from that vantage point to say, hey, there's no doubt you're telling the truth because you've now given the whole story, you've even given points where it didn't look real good for you either. And I don't know if, I, if you, you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we kind of came here to let you talk a little, maybe get some stuff off your mind or chest if you need to, and then to tell us the whole truth, to take us through this whole thing that happened on Monday not leaving anything out, not adding anything in, because Mark and I looked at, looked at the tapes, looked at the notes, and it's real obvious there's some places where some things were left out, or maybe changed just a bit to, to maybe looking at yourself to protect yourself a little. Um, from what I'm seeing, even if I fill those in, I'm thinking you're all right, okay? You don't have to worry about things. Um, we're, we're there for you. Um, and, I, and, and we know what Stephen did, and, and, and we know kind of what happened to you and what he did. We just need to hear the whole story from you. And as soon as we get that, we're comfortable with that. I think you're going to be a lot more comfortable with that. It's going to be a lot easier on you down the road. Uh, if this goes to trial and stuff like that, we need to know that because it's probably going to come out. Think of Stephen for a second. Stephen is already starting to say some things, and eventually he's going to potentially lay some crap on you and try and make it look like you are the bad person here. Um, and we don't want that. We want everything out front so we can say, yeah, we knew that, Stephen. He told us that. You, you, know, you get my drift? I'm gonna, I don't know, Mark has something, something. I'm just going to give you an opportunity to talk to us now and, and, and kind of fill in those gaps for us. Honesty here, Brendan, is the thing that's going to help you. Okay, no matter what you did, we can work through that. Brendan Ray Dassey is an American from Mantua County, Wisconsin, who at the age of 16 became a suspect in the investigation of Teresa Hallbach's rape and murder. His videotaped interrogation and confession, which he recanted in court, substantially contributed to both the prosecution and defense's case. Parts of Brendan's interrogations were shown in the 2015 Netflix true crime documentary series, Making a Murderer, which examined the 2005 to 2007 investigation, prosecution, and trials of Dassey and his uncle, Stephen Avery. Okay, we can't make any promises, but we'll stand behind you no matter what you did, okay? Because you're being the good guy here. You're the one that's saying, you know what, maybe I made some mistakes, but here's what I did. The other guy involved in this doesn't want to help himself. All he wants to do is blame everybody else, okay? And by you talking with us, it's helping you, okay? Because the honest person is the one that's going to get a better deal out of everything. You know how that works. Mm -hmm. You know, honesty is the only thing that'll set you free, right? And we know, like Tom said, we know we reviewed those tapes. We know there's some things you left out, and we know there's some things that maybe weren't quite correct that you told us. Okay, we've done, we've been investigating this a long time. We pretty much know everything. That's why we're talking to you again today. We really need you to be honest this time with everything. Okay. If, in fact, you did some things which we believe some things may have happened that you didn't want to tell us about, it's okay. As long as you can, as long as you be honest with us, it's okay. If you lie about it, that's going to be problems. Okay? Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. All right. Should we just go through that whole day again on the 31st, or how do you want to well, do we it? Well, we can do that. I'd give him a chance to just talk to us. And sure. If he wants to go through the whole day, if he wants to fill in the pieces, that's, that's up to Brendan right now. What would you rather do? You just want to talk to us and tell us, you know, starting with that day and how you actually came to know what happened and stuff. Because now we know you're in the garage and stuff, apparently cleaning up and stuff, so tell us about that. Brendan was born to Barbara and Peter Dassey in Mantua County, Wisconsin, and was raised with three brothers and one half-brother. At the time of his indictment, then 16-year-old Dassey was enrolled in special education classes at Michicot High School. Brendan required special needs education due to test results highlighting borderline deficient IQ. Brendan largely kept to himself and was described by his peers as introverted and quiet. Brendan was especially fond of the WWE and was reportedly upset when he missed WrestleMania 22, as well as animals and playing video games. Before this case, he had no involvement with the criminal justice system. Well, he was working on his car and like he did something wrong and then like he poked a hole in like something and then 
to start leaking. And then later on, when, because I was helping him before I went over there a little bit. Yeah, I know. Later on, he, me and help, I helped him move the car out of there and cleaned it up. And I went back home, and then, then I get, later on, I got a call from him, and he wanted me to come over. Let's go back a little bit, okay? When did you first go over by Steve? At like nine o'clock. You said you were over in the garage helping him. Yeah. When was that? Like six, six thirty. Okay. So let's go back, okay? Let's go back to around that time. You get home off the bus at about three forty-five. Yeah. And what do you do now? You got to be honest here. I walked on the road and I go into my house. Okay. And what did you house. see at that time? That she was talking, or her car was over there. Where was her car? Like, on the other side, of, you know, where you drove by our house, mm -hmm. where you turned there? It was like on the other side of the road there, by the trees. And you just told, you just said something, you said she was talking, and then yeah. you stopped. Now, remember, this is very important, because we already know what happened that day, okay? Let's just be honest here, okay, Brendan? Mm -hmm. Let's get this out. Use your memory, not what Stephen told you, not what anyone else told you. Be honest, because we're gonna we're gonna be able to tell when you're not being honest. I, I'm telling you that right now. So you're walking down the road. Let's pick it up again, okay? I seen him talking to her on his porch and that, and I seen her her jeep there, and I walked in the house. So she's standing. Meaning she is Teresa? Mm-hmm. Did you recognize her? Not at first. You just knew it later on when this all came out? Yeah. So she's standing on his porch? Mm-hmm. Did Blaine see that? I don't think. And you're sure you saw that? You're sure it wasn't another time or anything like that? It was Halloween this, year, this yeah. last year. On the front porch, the area. Yeah. Do you remember what she was wearing? I know it's a long time ago. Don't guess. If you remember, you can say it. I don't remember. Do you remember how he was dressed? I think he, uh, white short, uh, white shirt with like red shorts or something like that. Okay. Anytime you don't remember, you say that, all right? Yeah, don't make anything up. You don't know it. You don't know it. So then, did what happen? And you saw her and him on the porch, and they were what? They were talking. And then what did you do? I walked in my house. And they were just talking? Were they doing anything else? Were they screaming, fighting, talking, pushing, anything? Just talking. Okay. You went in your house, and this is about quarter to four. Mm -hmm. and then what'd you do in your house? Be honest, because we don't have to go through this eight times. I went into my room, and because my mom told me I had to clean my room, I cleaned it a little bit, and I played PlayStation 2 for a little bit. And it was about like five o'clock, and. My my brother was on the phone with his friend. Blaine? Yeah. Okay. And he was talking about going trick or treating with him and that Jason will pick him up at like seven. And then? And then I ate and I went into the living room and I, like I was eating in the living room and watching TV. Then what'd you see? 
post. Where's the what? Where's and what happened? Well, then, then he called and said that he wanted help on his his car. Okay. Did he call you or did he come over? He called me. What on your cell phone or on on house the house phone? phone? He calls your house phone. Yeah. And this is about what time now? About six six thirty. Okay. And what does he say to you? He says, "Do you want to help me with the to fix the car?" Because he said that that if I would help him on his cars, he would like help me find a car. Okay. And so I did, and then that's when he like cut something, and then it was leaking on the floor. Let's stop right there. So you, he calls you and asks you for help to fix the car. Mm-hmm. And you go over to his house. Mm-hmm. And where do you go? Into the garage. And what's in the garage? His Monty. His Monty. Where is that Suzuki? On the side. Is the big garage door open? Mm-hmm. So you walk in there, and he says, "And this is Halloween." Okay. And what's he doing? He's working on this Monday. What about the fire? Do you mean if it was started or something? No, it wasn't. Okay. We're not going to go any further than this because we need to get the truth out now. We know the fire was going. We know that he had already had his altercation with Teresa. We don't believe there's a Monty in there. I talked to you the other night and you said nothing about a Monty. You said nothing about something getting punctured and leaking out. We talked about cleaning something up in that garage. You told me that you thought, thinking back now that it was blood, it was red in color. Let's, you're at your house, 6, 6.30, I'll go that far with you. It might even been earlier. What's going on? Let's take it through honestly now. Come on, Brandon, be honest. I told you before, that's the only thing that's going to help you here. We already know what happened. Okay? We don't get honesty here. I'm your friend right now. But I, I got I to gotta believe in you. And if I don't believe in you, I can't go to bat for you. Okay? You're nodding. Tell us what happened. Your mom said you'd be honest with us. She's behind you 100% no matter what happens yeah, here. That's what she said. Because she thinks you know more, too. We're in your corner. We already know what happened. Now tell us exactly. Don't lie. We can't say it for you, Brandon, okay? Well, that, that morning he said that if he wanted me to come over like at 6.30 and he had the fire started, because he wanted to buy, uh, burn some tires, mm -hmm. and so he had it started, and the Jeep was still in there. Whose Jeep? The Suzuki. It was still in where? In the garage. So the Monty's not in there. Okay. Whose car was in the garage? Tell me the truth. We already know. Just tell us. okay. The truth. That's, it's so easy to tell the truth. It's hard to make things up. Her Jeep. That's right. Her Jeep was in the garage, wasn't it? And you, you tell me if I'm wrong. When you were at the house, you just went over here because you had talked about it in the morning. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. There was no call from Stephen asking you to come over, was there? And you went over with the big door closed? Mm -mm. You're sure about that? Yeah. So the big door is open and her truck is in there when you get over there? Yeah. By her truck, who are we talking about? Well, if I wanted to come over later. No, whose truck whose was truck? in there? Oh, the, the truck? Yeah. Her Jeep? Who's her? Teresa's. Okay, and that Jeep is a what? Do you remember? Like what color? Color or make. Green, like a greenish blue. 
Okay. Is it drove in or is it backed into the garage? It's backed in. Okay. Now, let's be honest. What did he tell you? What did he what show you? What did you see and what did he tell you? He showed me the knife and the uh, rope. Where was she? Come on, we know this already. Be honest. In the back of the Jeep. She was in the back of the Jeep. Was she alive or dead at that time? Dead. Are you sure? Okay. What did you see in the back? I know this is hard, but what did you see in the back of the Jeep? That she was laying there with like a small blanket over her. Do you remember where her head was? Not really. Did she have clothes on? Yeah. She was clothed. Yeah. Was she tied up already? Or did you help him do that? On November 10th, 2005, Teresa Hallbach's vehicle was located. Her Toyota RAV4 was found partially and poorly concealed on Stephen Avery's property. Jerry Pagel, Calumet County Sheriff, conducted a search soon after finding the SUV, which resulted in finding Hallbach's phone, license plates, keys, and Hallbach's charred remains. Five days later, on November 15th, blood samples that were found in Hallbach's Toyota had been sourced to Stephen Avery. Avery was charged with the kidnapping and murder of Hallbach, mutilation of a corpse, and illegal possession of a firearm. She was tied up already. Where? Tell me how she was tied up. Like the rope was right here around her body. Are you sure? Did Steve have any blood on him at that time? On his finger. What about on his body, on his clothes? Not that I know of. Where did you see blood? Like, like right here. Where else in the garage? On the floor. A lot. Like drips. Where was it dripping from? I don't know. What did he tell you he did to her? That he stabbed her. Let's stop there for a second now, okay? I want to back up just a bit. I didn't mean to interrupt that thing, but what time? Actually, did you get over here now? About. Like quarter to seven. So it's still about that same time, quarter to seven? Are you sure? Mm hmm Okay. Did you really see those two talking on the, on the porch? Yeah. You did. You're 100% on it. Yeah. Okay. How did she get in the back of the Jeep? Tell us that. Oh. Did you help him? No. Let's be honest, your friend. If you helped him, it's okay. Because he was telling you to do it. You didn't do it on your own. I didn't, I didn't touch her. So you get over into the garage, and the garage door's open, and her truck's in the garage, right? Yeah. And what does he say to you? Think about it and be honest. That's when he threatened me. That if I would say anything, that he like trusted me or something. Why did he? Ha why did he have you come over there? Did he need help with something? Remember, we already know, but we need to hear it from you. Why did he have you come over there? He needed help, didn't he? What did he need help with? Go ahead and tell us. Probably to get rid of the body. Yeah. So, what Mark's saying is, did he call you? Did he come to the door and say, Brendan, I need, what, what did he do? 
He came over. Tell us what he told or asked you to do. He said, hey, Brennan, you want to help me do something? And keep going. And I said, for what? And he's like, for something to do in my garage. I said, uh, sure, and then later I came ordering. What time did he come to your house? About your house and ask you if you want to do something, help him with something? Mm -hmm. Tell me that again. That he wanted me to come over there and help him move something. Okay. Did he tell you what? No. Did you go over right away? No, I waited 10 minutes. Okay, so then you walk over and the garage door is open. Yeah. And what do you see again? Her Jeep. Okay. And you're sure the big garage door is open? You didn't go in the little door? No. So you see her Jeep, and then what happens? Does he what? He opens the back door. Okay, and what does he say? And told me to help him. D don't you ask him a question, who is this, or what? Yeah. Okay, tell me what he said. He said that it's a girl that he was kind of peed off at. Did he say who, who it was? Teresa Halbach. Why was he peed off at her? I don't know. I think he probably told you. So just be honest. We already know. He's obviously not holding anything back from you. He had you come over to see this. We already he know. used you for this. So bring us into the garage again. You mentioned earlier that's when he threatened you. Tell us that. That he threatened me that if I would say anything that he would stab me like she, he did to her and that that um, he was pissed off at her because of he wanted to get his his blazer and the thing that, like, the last time she was there, and he couldn't. Okay, so he opens the back door of her truck, and tell me what you see. Her body laying there. What could you see of her? Truth, now. As hard as it is, tell us the truth. Her head, her body, her feet. So she was not covered up? No, I didn't think so. See, we already knew that. Did she have clothes on? I'll be honest. If she did, she did. If she didn't, she did. Sort of. Okay, what'd she have on? Like a white t-shirt and that. Pants. What do you mean, sort of? Either she had clothes on or she didn't. It's what, some of it on and some of it off? What? It was like ripped. It was ripped. Where was it ripped? Like right here. Was it a t-shirt or a button-up shirt or what kind of shirt? A button-up one. What color? Like... Like a black one. Okay, before he just said there was a white t-shirt. She had that on too? Mm -hmm. Underneath that shirt? Yeah. Okay. And in the other interview, you said it was blue. Do you remember what color it was? If you don't remember, say you don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> so he threatens you, and what does he say to you? 
it to help them get rid of the body. Okay. Before you mentioned trust, that he said something about trust. Tell us about that. What do you say about that? That he really likes me much, and they trust me that I won't say none. So what happens next? On four separate occasions spanning over 48 hours, Dassey was interrogated. At no point during these interrogations was a legal representative, a parent, or any other adult or guardian present. Initially interviewed at November 6th at the family cabin in Krivitz, Dassey was interrogated via the Reed Technique. The Reed Technique was developed to not only permit, but also further encourage law enforcement officers to use tactics that put pressure onto suspects to confess to their actions. To understand why the use of the Reed Technique with Brendan was controversial, it's critical to know what the technique is, at least on a layman's level. The Reed Technique can be trimmed down to what is essentially a nine-step interrogation process. That process is as follows. Step 1. Positive Confrontation Advise the suspect that the evidence has led the police to the individual as a suspect. Offer the person an early opportunity to explain why the offense took place. Step 2. Try to shift the blame away from the suspect to some other person or set of circumstances that prompted the suspect to commit the crime. That is, develop themes containing reasons that will psychologically justify or excuse the crime. Themes may be developed or changed to find one to which the accused is most responsive. Step 3. Try to minimize the frequency of suspect denials. Step 4. At this point, the accused will often give a reason why he or she did not or could not commit the crime. Try to use this to move towards the acknowledgement of what they did. Step 5. Reinforce sincerity to ensure that the suspect is receptive. Step 6. The suspect will become quieter and listen. Move the theme of the conversation towards offering alternatives. If the suspect cries at this point, infer guilt. Step 7. Pose the alternative question. Give the suspect two choices for what happened, with one being more socially acceptable than the other. The suspect is expected to choose the easier option, but whichever alternative the suspect chooses, guilt is admitted. There's always a third option, which is to maintain that they did not commit the crime. Step 8. Lead the suspect to repeat the admission of guilt in front of witnesses and develop corroborating information to establish the validity of the confession. Step 9. Document the suspect's admission or confession and have him or her prepare a recorded statement, either audio, video, or written. While the strategy may seem like a viable option for interrogators to use, it's essential to point out that Dassey had been clinically evaluated as being highly suggestible. This, in and of itself, would make a suspect like Dassey more compliant and can ultimately lead to improper interrogation outcomes, namely, false confessions. That he told me to grab her feet, so I did, and mm -hmm. so he took her out in the back and put her in the fire pit. Was the fire burning already? Yeah. Tell us, did you carry her out there? Did you use something to get her back there? Well, we lifted her out of the Jeep and put her on like a, like a wheel thing. What a wheel thing, what's that? Like the things where you get under your car. A creeper? Yeah. Okay. And is that creeper always kept in his garage? Boy, he was borrowing it from the yard or something like that. What's that creeper say on it? Do you remember? What color is it? Like black and red. Black and red, okay. So you guys lift her out of the truck. Mm -hmm. And you got which part of her again? Her feet. And what is Steve carrying? Her head and her shoulders. And you put her on the creeper? Yeah. Does she have shoes on? No. Does she have... Did you take her clothes off then? Mm-mm. -mm. Was she tied up? Yeah. Describe that again, how she was tied up. And, and again, make it easy on yourself and just tell us the truth the first time. The hard part's over. That it was like wrapped around her like three, four times. Wrapped around where? Show us where. On your body. Right here. Okay. What about her feet? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what? They're tied up. What were they tied up with? Rope. What kind of rope? Like, oh, like that round. Something you'd use for clothesline, that yeah. type of thing. What color was it? Like white and blue. Okay. What about her hands? I don't remember. Where did you see injuries on her? Her stomach. Her stomach? What did it look like? Like she was stabbed. Well, I don't necessarily, I'm going to tell you I don't know what it looks like when someone's stabbed. Okay, you got to talk to someone that doesn't realize this. Tell us what you saw. Like it was all bleeding in that. Show me where and I knew that would be. Like right here. How much blood? Was that, show me on you the extent of the stain or the blood that you saw. Like, right there. That whole area, was it pretty wet yet or dry? Like damp. Damp. Could you see flesh or just the shirt? A little bit of flesh. How many times did he say he stabbed her? Once. What else did he do to her? You already know, to be honest. We've got enough of her to know some things that happened to her. So tell us the truth. What else did he do to her? Right there. Did he tell you that? Tell us about that. And where he did it. I don't know where he did it, but... Okay. What did he say he did? In his words, what did he tell you? You can you can swear, you can use any language you want. Tell us exactly what he told you he did to her. During the investigation, Dassey, who was also Avery's alibi, underwent a series of interrogations without counsel or parent present. Although Dassey and his mother consented to the interrogations, in which investigators made false promises to Dassey using approved interrogation techniques. While being interrogated, Dassey confessed in detail to being a co-conspirator in the rape and murder of Halbach and the mutilation of her corpse. His confession was later described as a, quote, clearly involuntary in a constitutional sense, end quote, by a U.S. magistrate judge whose opinion was overturned by an appellate court. The U.S. Supreme Court upheld the appellate court by refusing to hear the case. Dassey was arrested and charged on March 1, 2006, with being party to a first-degree homicide, sexual assault, and mutilation of a corpse. Special Prosecutor Ken Kratz held a major press conference about the two cases, discussing the charges against Avery and Dassey, and reading verbatim elements of Dassey's confession. Kratz's press event was widely covered by TV and newspapers. Dassey later recanted his confession in a letter to the trial judge, stating that he got most of his ideas from a book. Daddy ripped off her clothes, and she refused, and... She tried to get away, but he went. He was too strong for her, and he did it. He did what? Raped her. What did he say? Did he use those words? Are you sure? Because he's just not use the words he uses. Are you? If you're sure, that's okay. Yeah. And where did that happen? I don't know. Okay. And she tried to get away, but he was too strong. Yeah. And then what did he do to her? Well, after he was done, that's when he put her back in the Jeep in the back. Was she dead then yet or not? Brandon, were you there when this happened? No. Okay. Was she dead there then or not? Yeah. How do you know that? I have a feeling I know how you know that. We already know, Brandon. We already know. Come on, be honest with us. Be honest with us. We already know. It's okay. We're going to help you through this, all right? 
How do you know that? I was outside riding my bike. Mm -hmm. I could hear it. What could you hear? Screaming. Okay. Was the door closed at that time? Mm hmm. Did he know you were out there? No. What was the screaming like? What was she saying? Like, help me. Did you know what was going on? No. What did you do? Well, I was going up to the driveway and get the mail. What time was that? About 4, 4.30. Is it light out? Yeah. Okay. So you go out on your bike and you hear screaming coming from where? His house. Whose house? Stevens. The house or the garage? The house. From the house. All right. Then what do you do? I just went to go get the mail and went in the house. So you go get the mail and you go in the house and then what? Sat down and watch TV. Okay. okay, Brandon, you're doing a good job. Let's go back to when you go outside to get your bike. And you're going to go get the mail. You said you heard screaming. Any more? Tell us more about what you heard. You said, help me. Was it female screaming? Yeah. What else did you hear her say, if anything? That's all I heard. And is her vehicle still there? Yeah. Where is the vehicle that time? By the big trees. Okay. Did that scare you when you heard that screaming? Sort of. Did you go over to his house then? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yeah. And you said you rode your bike down to get the mail. Yeah. Came back, and then what'd you do? Honestly. You went over to his house? No. What'd you do? I went to uh, our garage and put the bike away. And Brian was in there working on his car. Yeah. Uh, he, I asked him if he wants any help, and he said no. That if he wanted help, he would come in and get me or something. So I went in the house and I sat down. Did Brian hear the screaming too? No, he had the radio going. Okay. Did you tell Brian? No. Okay, you went in the house and sat down, and then? I waited and then I watched TV for a little bit, and my mom came home. And she comes home at about what time? About 4.35. Okay. And then what happens? She asked me if anybody got the mail? I'm like, yeah, I did. And watched TV more and he came over and asked if she wanted help. He came over and asked you what? If I could help him move something. Okay. Okay, let's to this point now I think we're pretty close the truth. How close are we, Brendan? Pretty close. Okay, then give us the little parts that we don't have yet up to that point. Steven, there's something in there we're missing. You heard her. I have a feeling he saw you, you saw him. Something in here that we're missing. Because, you know, we're not idiots. I don't see him coming over to the house and asking you to help unless he knows you know something. So tell us what you knew, that he knew. It's okay, Brad. We already know. I think he went over to his house. Maybe you asked him to get his mail. Something in here is missing. Well, when I got the mail, there was like a envelope in there with his name on it. All right. Okay, uh, we're going. What did you do? 
knocked on the door and he answered it. Yeah, and then what? I gave it to him and then I left. Come on now. You just heard screaming over there. You're That's making this hard on us and yourself. Be honest. You went inside, didn't you? Yeah. You went in the trailer? Mm-hmm. You're not. Okay. Did he invite you in? Yeah. Okay. And where was she? In his room. Okay. Did you go back there and look? No. Brandon, be honest. I didn't. How do you know she was in his room? The door was open. Could you see her? Yeah. Was she alive? Well, she was handcuffed to the thing. She was handcuffed to what? The bed. Was she naked? Was she alive? Yeah. How do you know? Because she was moving around. Was she making any noise? for help. What was handcuffed? Her hands or her legs or both? Both. And what were they handcuffed to? Like the hand, like there's round poles on okay. each side. Okay. On his bed. And you, you're, you're, you're getting there, okay? Let's back up again. Did you go get the mail? Yeah. When you went to get the mail with your bike, did you hear something at that time, or did it happen when you came back with the mail? You can do it. Just tell us the truth. When I came back. I gotta believe this is in your in your mind right now, like a picture. There's a video in your mind, this whole thing, and you're trying to get it out. And the only way you can get it out is by talking about it right now. So you came back. Did you have a letter for Stephen? Yeah. Did you go to his trailer? Yeah. Did you hear screaming coming from inside the trailer? Yeah. What did you do then? You're at the, are you at the door? Where are you? When you first hear the screaming, where are you? Like by the other camper that we passed. Way down there? Mm hmm You hear screaming ha halfway or a quarter way down that frontage road, your driveway road? Yeah. Do you, are you able to make out any of the words? No. Okay. Take me from there and be honest so we don't have to keep backing up here, because we, we know, but we need it in your words. I can't, I can't say it. I did. I already know. You know we know. Dassey's first appointed lawyer, Len Kaczynski, was removed by the court on August 26, 2006, due to his decision not to appear with Brendan during the May 13th interrogation. He was replaced by two public defenders. Okay. Come on, buddy. Let's get this out, okay? You're coming back with the mail. Take us through it. It's the video in your head. Play it for us. You come back with the mail, what happens? Well, I stopped and I seen if there was any mail for me, so I seen Stevens. So I went over there right away to bring it over by him. And I knocked like three times and then he finally came. Are you hearing anything coming from the other side of the trailer at this time? Yeah. What? The words help me. Okay. That's got to be pretty devastating, right? But you still knock. Mm-hmm. You went into the trailer then? You knock and he comes to the door. What's he look like? Is he dressed? Has he got anything on him? What, what's he look like? He's got a white shirt on with red shorts and all sweaty. He's all sweaty. Any blood at this time? No. All right. 
Does he let you in the trailer? He lets me in the kitchen. He what? He walks me into the kitchen. What does he say to you? If I want a soda. Does he know you've heard anything? Is she still saying stuff? Yeah. Then he walks you into the kitchen. Okay, play the video for us, bud. Tell us what's happening. It's okay. Tell us what happened. What does he say to you? That he never got some of that stuff, so he wanted to get some. Never got what? A girl. Okay, what did you say just a second ago, though? Repeat what you said. That he wanted to get some. Some what? Pussy. That's what he said to you? Okay. Now I can start believing you. Okay. So do you have a soda? Mm-hmm. And then what happens next? I open it and drink some. What's he saying to you? It's all right. You are doing the right thing. Come on, what's he saying? That he wants to keep on doing it. Okay. Doing what? Raping her. What kind of words is he using, though? You can say those words here. That he wanted to fuck her so hard. Could you see her at this time? No. Okay. What happens next? Remember, we already know. But we need to hear it from you. It's okay. It's not your fault. What happens next? Does he ask you? He does, doesn't he? We know. He asks you, doesn't he? What does he ask you? Say if I wanted a girlfriend. Tell us how he said it. That if, if he wanted me to have, to get some pussy. Yeah, okay. And then what happens next? They said that if I wanted to, I can go get some, but not right now. Oh, come on, be honest. You went back into that room. Don't let us know, Brendan. We know you were back there. Let's get it all out today. This will be all over with. Yes, if you want some, right? That's what you told us. Mm -hmm. If you want some pussy, where are what you do you tell them? I said I wasn't aged, and so he took me back there and showed me some. What did he show you? Her naked body. Okay, is she alive? Yeah. Is she talking? Yeah. What'd she say? What'd she say? I know it's hard, but you gotta tell us what did she say. The video will never go away unless you can talk to us about it. Go ahead. What'd she say? She's asking Stephen why you would do something like that. Does she say anything to you? She see, does she see you? Yeah. Does she say something to you? No. Describe again. Were you accurate when you described how she was on the bed? How is she attached to that? Where is she? Tell us that and be truthful again. That she's chained up to the bed and she's faced up. Face up, no clothes on? Mm -mm. What do you mean she's chained up to explain that? Like some handcuffs. Where are the handcuffs? On her arms or on her legs or where? Both. Okay. Do you remember the color of the handcuffs and the leg irons? 
like regular ones. Which would be what color? Silver. Okay. And are her legs spread apart? Or are they together? Or tell us how it looks. Like spread apart a little bit. So you, she, he brings you back to her and he shows you her. And what do you do? Honestly. Because we think very important. We know what happened. To be truthful. We know what happened. It's okay. What did you do? I do not. Brendan. Brendan. Come on. What did you do? What does Stephen make you do? He told me to do. What does that mean to you? To score. Did you do that? All right, take a breath, Brad. Take it all. Did he watch? It's okay. Look okay. good. Okay, where is Steve at this time? Oh. Why? Where's her clothes at this time? So, how'd they get out? Clean up that. The bank 50. We clean that up and then player. Throw what on the fire? Clean up. What did it call? Mm. Okay, let's, let's go. Do we have her bra and panties too? So you took it outside and threw it on the fire? Yeah. Oh, and it, it, was that not true then? Uh, in the garage now. What kind of cleaning? What do you do? Gas on it so he could get it off. Then he tried painting it and then he drained it like. And it probably got on the floor and it splashed up on my pants or something. Oh my. Where the Jeep's tire was. So if you had to say some dimensions, like two by two, two feet by two. Cleaned in the garage or just one? Two. If we took you to that garage, would you be able to show us where? Yeah. Okay. Where'd you get the bleach from? In his house, but in his bathroom. Were you there when his girlfriend called Jody? No. Was Stephen bleeding? On his fingers, that's it. Did Stephen? That he was gonna crush it. Sooner he said, the sooner the better. You like what? What kind? Coke. Coke? Okay. Before we get that, does Evan told you that someone else knows? Not that I know of. What about Chuck? Okay. Take a little break. Yeah, take a breath. <clears throat> hey, Brendan, you need to use a bathroom or anything? You sure? Need anything else? Mm -mm. Sandwich or anything? Did you get your soda? Yeah. Okay. We'll be in about two minutes, okay? I got a question though. Sure. How long is this going to take? It shouldn't take a whole lot longer. Do you think I can get there before 129? Um, probably not. Uh, What's at 129? Well, I had a project to 160. Okay. We'll worry about that later, okay? All right. I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? Okay. The Dassey trial began on April 16th, 2007, with a jury from Dane County, Wisconsin. The trial lasted nine days, with a verdict delivered on April 25th, 2007. The jury deliberated for four hours, finding Dassey guilty of first-degree intentional homicide, rape, and mutilation of a corpse. Though only 17 years old at the time, Dassey was tried and sentenced as an adult, and his intellectual limitations were ruled irrelevant. In January 2010, Dassey's attorneys entered a motion for retrial, which was denied in December by Judge Fox. Fox's ruling was affirmed by the Wisconsin Court of Appeals in January 2013, and the Wisconsin Supreme Court declined to review it. The release of Making a Murderer in December 2015 generated a wide international audience and was met with significant media attention. There were numerous discussions regarding the prosecution of criminal cases. 
Due to the unprecedented response to the Netflix docuseries, by July 2016, Making a Murderer 2 was in production. Brennan's conviction has been appealed through the state court system, and a petition for habeas corpus was filed in federal court. Because of the nature of Dassey's interrogations, there have been calls for the exoneration of Dassey, with petitions for his freedom, and the implementation of, quote-unquote, juvenile interrogation protection law in Wisconsin, which would prohibit police from questioning minors without a lawyer present. So, do you need to use a bathroom or anything? No, you're good? Okay. How are you feeling, Brendan? Pretty good. Pretty good? Got a lot of stuff off your chest, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more stuff, a lot of the truth. Uh, what we do when, when we leave the room, we kind of talk about stuff to make sure that we think we're, we're all on the same page and that, that we're getting the, you know, the truth, the whole truth. And, and we, you know, we think you're doing pretty good so far, but there's some areas that we have to revisit, okay? And then some other questions. And, and again, don't make us work so hard for this. Don't make yourself work so hard for it. Let's just get the truth out right away. Because again, we, we have a pretty good knowledge of what happened there. All right? Mm -hmm. I want to revisit when you went, when you got home from school, okay? You were with Blaine, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and you said you walked down the, you know, the road to your house, and you said that you saw Stephen on the porch. Huh. Mark and I have a problem with that. Now, it, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm going to put words in your mouth. But we have a problem with that. You know, Blaine not seeing it, stuff like that, and, and the time period because it's a quarter to four, and, and we're real familiar with time periods here and when she got there and stuff. Is there something you need to tell us about that? When you got home, what did you see before you went into your house? Did you even go in your house? Or did you go over to Stevens? You know, talk, talk to us about what happened there, because the time periods aren't adding up, bud. Well, I don't know if I ain't seen it, but I never asked him about it. So I don't know if he's seen it or not. Again, I, I, whether Blaine saw it or not, the time periods aren't adding up. They're not equal enough. We know when Teresa got there. Um, I, I know, I guarantee you, Teresa's not standing on that porch when you come home from school. I, just, I don't see that. <coughs> um, I don't. I, you know, I have a problem with the car sitting out front yet at this time either. That car sitting out front, other people are, would have seen that car, you know. Something's not adding up here, and you need to tell us the truth. Did this all start right when you came home from school? You need to tell me. You need to be honest with me. I can't tell you. I, I can't tell you these things. I can tell you we don't believe you because there's some things that are wrong, but you've got to tell me the truth. This is, you know, we're getting serious here now, okay? Tell me what happened when you got home. I got off the bus. I walked on the road. And we got to it. Thing, uh, the other house that's just sitting there for now. I could see her Jeep in the garage, just sitting there. And I didn't see Stephen and her on the, the porch. You, you did or you didn't? I didn't. Did not, okay. And I just walked up to the house. To whose house? Mine and Blaine's. Went into the garage to get the key to open the door. Because we always lock it when we leave. And we went in and Blaine grabbed the phone right away and I waited for like 30 minutes to wait for him to get off the phone with Jason so I can call Travis see what he was doing that night 
and I waited so I watched TV and that's when I went up to get the mail. Okay. So I'm going to take you through this now that you've said it. You got off the bus, came down the road. You said you saw Teresa's vehicle in Stevens' garage. Uh -huh. How did you see that? With the front end out of the, the door. With what? The front end was out of the door. The front end was out of the door. So the big door was open, I take it? Yeah. Okay. And you did not see Teresa or Stephen? Oh. Okay. And then you said you went into your house. Uh-huh. You, did you go over to Stephen's at that time? No. And you went over to your house, and it, the way you were telling me, you know, about 20 minutes, half hour, you had to wait because Blaine used the yeah. phone? And so then you went down and got the mail? Yeah. So you're in your house for about a 20 minutes, half hour? Yeah. And you went down to get the mail. Well, I called Travis first. You called Travis first. Okay, how long did you talk to Travis? Oh, 10, 15 minutes. And after you're done talking to Travis, what did you do? Went up to go get the mail. And did you take a bike, like you said? Yeah. And then you're coming back from the mail? Is, is that when you tell me what happened then again? That's when I went to get the mail and I came back. I was looking at it when I was riding the bike and I seen Steven's mail in there and I went over by him and I knocked on the door. Okay, and you heard stuff coming from there? Uh huh. Again, what did you hear coming from there? Screaming like, help me in that. Okay. And then you said before, you knocked on his door, uh -huh. and you said you had to knock three times. Three times, and it took how long for Stephen to get to the door? About oh, five minutes. About five minutes. While you were standing at the door, did you continue to hear things coming from the inside? Yeah. Stephen came to the door and took you into the kitchen. You said, right? Yeah. Okay. About what time do you think this is? Thinking back now on your time periods, when you got home, how long it took for these phone calls and stuff. Oh, five, five thirty. Okay. When you knocked, when you actually knocked on Stephen's door, was the big garage door still open? Do you remember? No. You don't remember or it wasn't open? I don't remember. Okay. Was Teresa Hallbach's vehicle sitting out in the driveway when you knocked on the door? No. Okay. So that's a little different than what you initially told us, is that right? Yeah. All right. Do you... Do you remember, Stephen, making any phone calls or getting any phone calls during this evening? During that evening? Like one or two of them. He made or he got? He got. Who were they from? Jody. Okay. What, can you tell me what the context, your side of the conversation was? What did you hear? He was like saying that he cares about her and that. So you said maybe a couple phone calls. When did the first call happen about? Oh, 5.35. About 5, 5.30, is that what you're saying? And what phone did he take that call on? His cell phone. Okay. And then when did the second call happen? About 10 minutes after that. 
Okay, and who was that call from, do you think? Jordy again. I think so, okay. Do you recall if um, Steve called anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. We talked last, or Monday, we talked a little about some things, a burn barrel out front. Do you remember anything about that burn barrel that uh, you might want to be a little more truthful about now? That was full of stuff. Was it burning? Yeah. Did you put some things in that burn barrel that night? No. What happened to Teresa's other personal effects? I mean, a, a woman usually has a purse, right? Tell us what happened to that. I don't know what happened to it. What happened to her, uh, her cell phone? Don't try to, to, to think of something, just... I don't know. Dassey is now represented by Stephen Dreisen and Laura Nyrider, both professors at Northwestern University's Center on Wrongful Convictions of Youth and experts in false confessions from juvenile suspects. In December of 2015, Dassey's attorneys filed a writ of habeas corpus in federal district court for release or retrial, citing constitutional rights violations due to ineffective assistance of counsel and a coerced confession. Did Steven, did you see whether a uh, cell phone of hers? No. Do you know whether she had a camera? No. Did Steven tell you what he did with those things? No. I need you to tell us the truth. Yeah. What did he do with her, her possessions? Oh. Brendan, it's okay to tell us, okay? It's really important that you continue being honest with us. Okay, don't start lying now. If you know what happened to a cell phone or a camera or her purse, you need to tell us, okay? The hard part's over. Do you know what happened to those items? You burned them. How do you know? Because... When I passed it, there was like, like a purse in there and stuff. When you passed what? The brain barrel. Did you look inside? Why did you look inside? Because it was full. What else was in there? Like a garbage bag, some... Did you put those things in the brain barrel? No. Did you actually see those items in the brain barrel? Yeah. Tell me what you saw in there, exactly. Like they're buried underneath a garbage, garbage bag that was. How do you know? How could you see them if they were underneath a garbage bag? Because the garbage bag was like on top, like that far off the top. Okay, so we have the barrel. Okay, why don't you look at me for a second? Okay, you got the barrel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's the top of the barrel, and the garbage bag is on top. Yeah. And where are those items you said you saw? Like right underneath it. Underneath the bag? Yeah. Well, how would you see that? Well, if the bag's like that far off the, you know, the top of the thing, you can see through underneath it. You could see underneath it? What did you see? Like a cell phone, camera, purse. Are you being honest with us? Yeah. Did you actually see those items? Yeah. When did you see them? When I came over there with the mail. Before you went into the house or after you went into the house? Before I went into the house. Why did you look in there? Because it was full. And it usually ain't. Okay. Did you see Stephen when you came home from school or at any time up until the point you went to into Stephen's house, did you see him go to the burning barrel with anything? No. Are you sure? Yeah. 
after you went in the house, did Stephen go to the burning barrel at any time? Not that I know. <clears throat> We got some other points that we're going to talk about here. You go there, you get into Stephen's house. Now, I don't want you to hold back any language or how he told you anything or how he presented himself to you when this stuff happened. When he took you into the kitchen, just kind of tell me what he told you again and how he told you. He asked me if I wanted to fuck the girl and if I wanted to try it. I said that I ain't old enough that to have a kid yet, so he said, yeah, do you want to try it though? I'm like, not right now. He just kept on egging me on. And, and, and did he say anything else to you when he was egging you on? How did he egg you on? He's like, come on, try it for me. And had you been back in the bedroom area yet at this time or no? No. What, what, tell me again what he told you was back there. Who or what? that Teresa Halbach was back there, that she was on the bed naked with, she was chained up to the bed. Could you hear her back there, yeah? Yeah. And what kind of things was she saying again? Like, help me and not to tell Stephen not to do this anymore. Did Stephen say that he had already done that or not? Yeah. What did he say he did to her? That he had sex with her. How did he say it? That he fucked her. At any time that night, did you see Stephen have sex with her? No. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Because we know now that you did and he watched while you did it. Did you watch once or while well, he did it? No. Did he do anything else to her sexually? No. Stick anything in her, anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. You told us about going in there and having sex with her that she was handcuffed and, and chained. Okay. Ultimately, and then you said you left the bedroom for a period of time and, and he talked to you out in the living room, right? Yeah. Again, just to remind us, what kind of things was he saying to you out in the living room? That, that he was saying that I did a good job and that he was proud of me. Okay. How long were you in the living room about? Well, five minutes, five, ten. And then after you're in the living room, where did you go? Back in there. Okay. And tell me and think, think about the video in your head, okay? You went back in the bedroom and go through what happened again. We went in there. We tied her up, and he stabbed her, and he told me to cut her throat and cut her hair off, and when we were done like that, we took off the handcuffs, and we took her outside to the jeep. Stuck her in the back. He said he would rather burn her than 
sticker back in there. And we put it on the floor and then he shot her ten times. And he threw it in the fire. Okay, well, there's some points that we're going to go over there in that, okay? In the, uh, well, in the bedroom. And he had you cut the hair off, you said, right? Mm hmm Where did you put the hair? On the dresser. Again, tell us why he wanted you to do that. I don't know. What happened to the hair after? I never touched it. Do you know where it went? No. Has he ever told you what he did with that hair? No. Brandon, you sure? Yeah. Do you have any of that hair at home? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Because you know we'll find it if you do. That would not be good for you. If we find your line or find things that you don't tell us about, I can't believe you then. If you tell me that you're sorry this happened, then I won't believe you. you I don't got me, none of the hair. Pardon? I don't got none of the hair. You don't got none of the hair? Did you get any blood on you? No. Okay. So, you tie her up, and you told us before you think she's dead at this time, and you guys, you and Steven, carry her out that back door and into the garage. When you're in the garage, where do you place her immediately? In the Jeep. Right into the Jeep, or did you set her on the floor, or? Right in the Jeep. Right into the Jeep. How does Steven get the rifle? When he set her down, on, when we set her on, on the ground, he went in the house and grabbed it. Was it a rifle or was it a handgun? It was a rifle. And where did he find that rifle, do you know? In his, his bedroom. Where was it in the bedroom? Hanging on the wall. What wall? Like, where the door is, there's like a... Like a gun rack up there. Okay, in relation to his bed, where would it be? Like on the left side wall. So if I'm laying in his bed, where is the where are these where is his gun? Like say like this was his bedroom and his bed was like right here, it would be on that wall. Let's say his bed is your bed, or his bed there, or the couch. Yeah. And you're sleeping what way? You, you fa your feet would face that way. Oh. And the guns would be right on that side. If I asked you to draw me a few pictures, do you think you could do that? Yeah. As to what a, the bedroom, if you could put things in the bedroom and then like put her on the bed how she was, could you do that? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, get some. Around, paper, yeah, probably. around, grab some papers, okay? All right. Get a clipboard right. or something. Should we draw some pictures? Is that okay? Or do you want some things we'll you want to talk for a bit okay. and we'll get to the pictures. All right. That's all right. That's fine. Um, Brendan, when you guys got her into the, the garage, you said that you placed her right into the back of the, the her vehicle, right? Yeah. And then he said that he, how did it come about that he wanted to do what he wanted to do? Tell me that. He told me that he was going to throw her in the, the pond. And he said that he would rather burn her because it's a lot faster to get rid of the, all the evidence. And earlier you said that the fire was going on at this time? Mm-hmm. Mark and I have a little trouble understanding why he's got this big fire going if he was actually talking about putting her into the pond. Because that night me and Blaine were going to invite some friends over for a bonfire, and he was probably getting it ready.
and then that day I got a call from Travis that said that he couldn't come and Blaine got a call from his friend that he that they couldn't come. Are you telling me that it wasn't until you guys were in the garage that he said that he was gonna burn or Yeah. And you're sure that are you sure about that? Uh huh. Okay. Then you said that you took her out of the, the back of the um, her vehicle. Did you help him do that? Mm -hmm. And then you said that he went and got the, a gun, right? Yeah. And he came back in. What did he do? He shot her ten times. Tell me where he shot her. Like in the head and so, in the belly and the uh, stomach. How many times did he shoot her in the head? Like three times. Tell me where in the head. What sides? Like the left side, I think it was. The left side of her head. And the, when he shot her in the body, where in the body again? I agree here. Okay. What was he saying when he was doing this, if anything? What was his demeanor? Was he calm? Was he what was he doing? He was calm. What was he saying to you? That we, he was sorry for me to see that stuff. Did he ask you to shoot her too, or did he tell you to shoot her? No. You sure about that? Yeah. When you got home from school, do you remember if a fire was going then? Uh -uh. I didn't look. When you knocked on the door to go in, was the fire going then? Yeah. Okay. When you knocked on the door to go into Stevens' trailer, was it still light out? Yeah. Okay. You mentioned then you took her, her back out, you shot her. Did anything else happen in this garage that, that is noteworthy? Remember, we, we've seen the garage, we've got the evidence from the garage. Um, did you guys do anything else to her out in the garage? No. Anything with ropes or bindings or anything like that? No. You took her out to the fire. And you're sure you used this creeper thing, right? Yeah. That's what you said. Did you carry her on that creeper thing, or did you actually push it out there, you guys? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You could push someone on, and you could actually carry that thing, or did you actually roll it? We carried it. Okay. Kind of, what would that be similar to? Kind of like a, um, do you know what I'm thinking of? Pushing it, the ambulance. Yeah. So you carried it like that? Yeah. And was she still unclothed at that time? Yeah. Okay. What time, what time was that? Oh, 5.30. Was it night out or dark out? Light. And then you put her on the fire, you said. And you put other stuff over that, over her, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Did you help Steven start that fire? No. Are you telling us the truth? Yes. Is it at this time that, what do you do after you put her on, her, on the fire? We put the tires on there and the branches. Where'd that stuff come from? He had it there already. He did? Okay, 
now the fire's going, she's on there, tell, tell them, tell me what you're gonna what you're doing now or what you guys do. It's only five thirty right now, what are you guys doing? After we put the tires and the branches on, we went to the house and went in there for a little bit. And we went out and he was gonna take the Jeep down in the pit. So he did. And that's when we covered it with branches and the hood. Did you guys go out by the fire some more that night? No. Where did this, this car seat come from? We got that. Tell me how you guys got that. I went over to my house and got the the golf cart and got he went to go pick them up and we went over to get the car seat and we put it by the fire and waited for it to burn down and we threw it on there and we went to go do the jeep. Okay, so you. You went and got this car seat. Did you get anything else with the, when you had the the golf cart? Well, old cabinet. An old, where'd you get that from? From in the back of our garage. Whose garage? Ours. Because we were using it to put it in the garage. Anything else that you went and gathered up with the golf cart? Just the tires and the wood. And the seat and the... Okay, so you, you, you got more tires? Yeah. And more wood? Mm-hmm. And what did you do with all that stuff? We put it in the fire. Okay. In August 2016, United States Magistrate Judge William E. Duffin ruled that Dassey's confession had been coerced and was therefore involuntary and unconstitutional and ordered him released. In November, the Wisconsin Justice Department appealed Duffin's decision to the United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, which blocked Dassey's release pending a hearing. Last night you mentioned, or Monday you mentioned, um, Stephen getting some other things out of the garage. What were those things again? The clothes. I mean, some things that you might use to... Oh, the shovel and the rake. Right. Did he get anything else like that out of the garage? No, just them two. And what did he use those for? To, like, pile so he can get it smooth so he can fit the, the rest of the stuff in there. Did you help him with that? Did you use the rake and the shovel at all? No. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Tell me again what he was doing with the rake. He was like pushing the stuff around so he can put more stuff on it so it's even. Show me what he was doing. You showed me the other day. Show like one like this. One like that. What kind of stuff was he pushing around? Like the wood in that. Was he pushing her around at all? Uh uh. -uh. Well, that was on the top in the cabinet. Okay. Were you able to see her in the fire? Just the forehead and the hands and the feet and a little bit of belly. Okay. Sometime during that evening, um, did someone come down to Stephen's trailer or in that area? No. You don't remember seeing, do you remember seeing anyone come down there and, and, and talk to Stephen for a bit? No. Do you know if anyone else saw anything? No. How much time did you think it took from when you cut her on the neck 
to the time you guys got her out in the garage? About 10 minutes. After after a fire was in and she was put in the fire, what time did you go home to your place that night? About 9.30. Did you come back out at all that night? Uh-uh. Was Steven out there when you went home? Yeah. Did he say he was going to watch the fire until it burnt down a little bit more? What did you guys do with Teresa's body after that, after it was burned? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't do nothing with it. Did Steven do anything with it? Yeah, but I don't know what. How do you, what do you mean by yes, but you don't know what? Like he tried to bury it or something. How do you do that? With the shovel. Did he take some of her body out of that fire pit? Yeah. He did. How, tell me how he did that. Like when the bones were left behind, he would like try to take the shovel and try to break the bones apart. And he would bury them, like right by the fire almost. What do you mean he'd bury them right by the fire? Like he dug a hole and he put the bones in there and he buried it. Where in relation to the fire? Like two or three feet away. Which way from the fire? Like towards the garage. Okay. Did you see him do that? I just heard that. Heard it from? Who? Him. Oh. So he told you that he used the shovel to break up bones? Yeah. And then buried some of the bones? Did he take some of her bones some anywhere else? On the other side of the... Like that... There was like... In the back of the yard, there was like this... Steep hill there. Like in the pit. There was some there that he threw there. Okay, we're gonna in a little bit. We're gonna have you draw some sketches and stuff, and we're gonna we're gonna want to see these places. How do you know that there were some bones there? He told me that he threw some there. Did he tell you how he did that? He had them in a bucket. And what I'm understanding is then, in the back of both your yards or his yards, down toward into the pit over that area. In like Redon's pit. Oh, Redon's pit. Not into your, um, um, the salvage yard area. <coughs> you think you'll be able to show us that? Yeah. Anything else that he did with the bones that he told you or that you helped him do? Did you help him do any of this? No. Did he have any more fires that week? Not that I know of. We talked about Monday night about um, bad smells and stuff. Do you remember any smells coming from that fire after she was put on there? Just that it smelled bad. You remember that? Did Steve call Chuck that night? Do you recall? I don't know. Did Steve make any other phone calls? I know I asked this once before, but... No. Or tell you about making any other phone calls? Just said someone called him. Okay. What was Steve wearing when you first got to his house? A white shirt and red shorts. You told us before that Jody called a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. What were you doing when Jody called? 
sitting on the couch watching TV. What was Steve doing? Sitting on the computer chair. Was that before or after you had sex with Teresa? After. Was Teresa still alive when Jody called? No. No? So Jody calls, you had already killed Teresa. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you remember what time Jody called about? Mm -mm. Why did you guys cut her hair? I don't know. Did Steve ever say why he wanted you to do that? No. Do you know if he kept any of it? I don't know. Where was her underwear? I don't know. Brendan, it's important. You've been honest so far. You need to be honest all the way through here, okay? I don't know where they are. You don't know where the underwear are? And if do you have it, if you do, it's okay. We understand that. I don't got it. Did Steve have it? I don't know. Do you think he might have kept it? Yeah. Why do you think that? Did he tell you that? No. You said that you had cut her throat. Here's the thing, Brendan. When you cut somebody's throat, they bleed a lot, okay? Am I right? Yeah. She bled a lot? So I know you had blood on you. It's pretty much impossible not to. Did you have blood on you? No. None at all? Uh-uh. What about when you moved her? No. What were you wearing at the time? Them pants and... a jacket. What jacket? My old blue one. Your old blue jacket? What, does it say anything on it? It, uh, the fire tux symbol on it. Fire tux symbol? Mm-hmm. Where is that jacket now? Probably in the closet when you walk in the house behind the door. What are you wearing for a shirt? I don't remember. What kind of shoes? My, my old red ones. Were they tennis shoes or what? They're just like these, but they're red. Okay. Do you remember what they there? No. You don't know a brand name? Uh, Nike or Adidas, something like that? You don't no. Know? Okay. <coughs> I think they're starter. You think they're what? Starters. Starters, okay. When this is all going on, did Steve say anything about Teresa? No. You told us two days ago that Steve was angry. Was that true? No. So Steve was not angry? So why do you think he did this to Teresa? Maybe because he wanted to go back to jail. Did he ever tell you that? No, that's what I was thinking. Because maybe he liked it in there, and the real world was probably too noisy for him, or too too big for him or something. Okay. In the garage, in Steve's garage, there were some wires hanging from the rafters. You remember those? Yeah. Did you guys use those for anything? No. Are you being honest with me now? Yeah. It's very important to be honest here. Did you ever use those for anything? No. Did you use anything else on Teresa other than rope? No. Okay. You want to draw me a few pictures? Okay. Brendan, when she was on the bed, was there a lot of blood? Yeah. Do you recall when the sheets were taken off the bed and stuff that the blood had soaked through to the mattress pad at all? Or mattress? Oh. Uh, you don't know? Did you see or not? No. You sure that 
she wasn't taken out to the garage alive and some of this stuff was done to her out there. Oh. Hanging from a rafter or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The worst is over. You're not going to shock us or anything by telling us that that happened. Because I, I just have a feeling that something may, may be there. In June 2017, a three-judge panel of the Seventh Circuit upheld the magistrate's decision to overturn Dassey's conviction. Judge Alana Rovner, joined by Judge Anne Claire Williams, affirmed over the dissent of Judge David Hamilton. On July 5th, the Wisconsin Department of Justice submitted a petition requesting a rehearing in bank by the entire Seventh Circuit panel. On August 4th, 2017, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals granted the state of Wisconsin's request for an in-bank hearing with oral arguments set for September 26th in Chicago before a full panel of sitting judges. Talk to me. Nothing happened in there. It all happened in the bedroom, you said. You're positive on that. Yeah. You keep in mind that, you know, Stephen's going to have his time to tell his story too, right? Yeah. He's not going to say anything different? Uh -uh. Did you turn the mattress over or anything like that? No. Cleaning of the house, uh, Brenda. Did, did uh, Stephen do some cleaning in the house? I don't know that. You know, what, you know what I mean by cleaning in the house, right? Yeah. Did he vacuum? Not when I was there. He didn't. Did he wipe anything down? Not that at all. Did he do any laundry? Did he wash some clothes? I don't know. What, what about the knife? Where is the knife? Be honest with me, where's the knife? It's okay. We need to get that, okay? Help us out. Where's the knife? Probably in the drawer. In which drawer? His knife drawer. And where's that? In the kitchen. Is it probably in there, or do you know what's in there? That's where I think it is. Why do you think it's in there? Because he wouldn't let the knife go. Because he wouldn't let the knife go? How do you know that? Because it was a pretty nice knife. Did he tell you that? Did he wash it off or anything, or wipe it off, or what did he do with the knife? He wiped it off. What did he use to do that with? Paper towel. And what happened to the paper towel? He burnt it. Can you describe the knife for us? Well, it was like that long. Okay. Big head on it, like that. Big head on it? What kind of, I mean, was it like a, a steak knife, or? Something you'd use for a deer? Something like that, like a deer. Okay, what color was the handle? Black. Black. And it was a, could you draw that? Do you think you could draw the knife? Yeah. Why don't you do that? Draw me the knife. just like this? Yeah. Okay. And this was black? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why don't you sign your name for that? The whole thing? Sure. Actually, write it. Okay. Um, we'll put the date on there, too. It's one... Correction. Three, one, oh, three. Um, oh, six. I'm, I'm all mixed up with dates today, aren't I? <laughs> um, the time is uh, 144 p.m. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, would you be willing to draw the bedroom out for us? Mm -hmm. okay. If you saw the knife again, would you be able to identify it? Yeah. All right. I'll draw out the bedroom. I'll put the bed on there and show me where the dresser and everything was the best that you can and where the door was and all that. So like the door is like right here. Okay. Should I once label you, it? Why don't you label it, yep. While you're doing that, Brendan, anything else unique about that knife? No. 
draw her on the bed. Should I draw the pillows? Mm-hmm. Stick person, that's fine, and how she was laying on there. Okay, and where were the handcuffs? Like, really, like that. Okay, and they have some light cuffs, too, he said? Yeah. Where, what other things are in the bedroom? Draw what else was in there. Okay. Anything else you remember? And it's a closet, and it's a dresser. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? And like the button. The gun holder thing was like right here on the wall. Okay. I should label that. Gun rack, maybe, or? How do you spell rack? R A C K. Okay. Anything else? Um, where was the key? Where did you put the key? Or where did Steven put the key? In the middle of the drawer. Okay. Why don't you put key there? Anything else you remember in there? Well, I think there was like a nightstand right there. Oh. Okay, why don't you draw that in? With a lamp on it. Okay, why don't you label that? Okay, um, anything else? Where'd you put her hair? Like right here. Okay, why don't you label that? How much hair do you think you cut off of her? Oh, three inches. Three inches? What part of, the, of her hair? The back. Okay. Anything else in there? Okay, why don't you sign it? Sign your name. draw would be the, um, the garage. Okay. Why don't you draw the garage out? Okay, where's the big door? Okay. Okay. And you said you put her in the truck first, is that yeah. correct? And then what did you do after that? We set her down like right here. Okay. Why don't you draw her body in there where you set her down? Okay. Um, and is that where, what did you do to her when you put her there? Or he went Steven in the house. Do? So who went in the house? He did and got the gun. Okay. And then he did what? Shot her. Okay. Do you know where the empty casings were? Uh-uh. Okay. Why don't you label some other things in there? Like, uh, what else was in that garage? Okay. Is there a snowmobile anywhere in there? Yeah, that was over here. Where 
I don't know if we asked you, the gun was, you said it was a 22, but was that a single shot or what type of gun was it, do you remember? Yeah, single. It's a single shot, not a semi-automatic? Mm -hmm. Why don't you draw where the blood stains would have been? And what did those blood stains come from? Like when she was laying there, or yeah, when she was laying there? Do you know did he when he shot her? You said how many times? Ten. Do you know did he hit her every time? Oh. Did he hit anything else in the garage at all? Uh -uh. Where was he standing when he shot her? Right here. Why don't you put an X there and put his initials there? And where were you standing? Right over here. Okay, put your initials there. Was there blood anywhere else? No. What about behind the vehicle or anything like that? No? No. All right, why don't you sign it? So let's, let's try that. Get it back to you. So like, should I draw uh, like the garage in right there a little bit? Just yeah, you know, put a little bit of the garage in. fire pit been there? About four or five months. Okay. And where did you put her body? Did right you draw here. it in there? Okay. Um, was there, was the dog there yet at that time? Yeah, the, the dog was like right over there. Put it, draw the dog house in, where the dog house is. You can label that too. And why don't you label what that was? How do you spell garage? G-A-R-A-G-E. Okay, um, where did you get the brush from? From the field. You said that he had taken some bones and put them in a five-gallon pail and he dumped them. Uh -huh. Where would that be? Which way? Probably his house would like be a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. It would be like over here somewhere. Okay. Did you actually see him do that? Uh -huh. How do you know he did that? He told me that he put them in a bucket and he pulled threw them over here. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to add in there? Okay, why don't you sign that? Well, when we got the seat, we put it like, we set it down like right here. Did you sit there and watch the fire burn or anything? Yeah. Or we just set it there? <coughs> 53. Yeah, that's pretty good. On February 20th, 2018, Dassey's legal team filed for a petition for a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. In law, certiorari is a court process to seek judicial review of a decision of a lower court or government agency. Justices were scheduled to discuss the case in conference to determine if they would hear the case on June 14th, 2018, but the case was removed from the schedule without an explanation or a rescheduling order on the morning of the conference. On June 25th, 2018, Sergio Arari was denied. Brendan, got a few more questions to cover here. A little bit worse is over as far as um, the questions. Can you describe Stephen's house for me? Like color and stuff like that? 
it's like a red, and the top is like silver, and the bottom is like cement. Okay. And where's his house located in relation to, say, your house? Like how far away from ours? How far away, what direction, if you know? I don't know what direction, but it's about like... About 350 feet away. Okay. If you come out your front door, that you can't get into now because it's not shoveled, what direction would it be? Left, right, straight, back? Left. To the left. Okay. And then his garage, how would you describe his garage? The same red and the top was black. Okay, and how many garage doors are on it? One and big garage doors. There's only one big one and one small one. Okay. And there's like three windows. Okay. Any of those windows facing your house? Just one. Okay, and then the location, and I know you drew it here, so it's pretty obvious, but the location of the burn pit is, is where? In relation to the garage and his house, etc. In, like, where you use the park as a car? Like... The burn pit, where you were... On the burn pit? Yeah, what you drew here. Where is that in relation to the garage? Straight back from my garage, like in the back of the, by the window. Okay. Um, we've got that. We we've got the gun. Now, is there any reason that your DNA or fingerprints would be on that gun? Uh uh I never touched it. Can you tell me why, if, if Teresa was? was dead when she was in the garage, why you would shoot or why he would shoot a dead body? I don't know. Probably to make sure she's dead or something. Did he say anything of why he shot her? No. You're just saying, your your guess is that to make sure she was dead? Yeah. You're sure he didn't say anything? Uh -uh. Was he pretty calm about this? Yeah. I'm just going to revisit one thing when you're in the bedroom and, in, and you cut her throat. Previously you said that you thought she was alive. Is that still your thought on that? Yeah. And why was that? Because she was breathing a little bit. She was like trying to... Not trying to breathe as hard as she could. From screaming, screaming a lot. She was screaming a lot or wasn't? She was. When you cut her throat, was she screaming? Uh-uh. Oh. When you, you cut her throat? Because when you scream a lot, you, like, your, your breathing goes up or something. Well, explain that a little bit. You said she was screaming a lot. When was she screaming a lot? Like... While you were doing it? After you did it? Before you did it? Before. When you cut her throat, what was she doing, if anything? Like, screaming for help and crying. I want to I wanna get that straight. She was screaming for help and crying when you cut her throat? Yeah. When did Stephen choke her, or strangle her? Like a little bit after that. Well, let's let's just go back a little bit, okay? Tell us what exactly happened to her. What order it happened in? You said there were basically three things prior to you guys shooting her. Explain those in, in the order that it happened. Starting with when we got in the room. Yeah, what what you guys did to her. We had sex with her. Okay. Then he stabbed her. And who stabbed her? He did. Who's he? 
Stephen. Okay. And then what? And I cut her throat. Okay. And he choked her and I cut off her hair. Okay. So he choked her after you cut her throat? Mm-hmm. Gotta show me, like, on your throat where you cut her. Like right here. How deep? Just as long as the knife went through. Okay. With your fingers, show me how deep you went into her throat. I don't go like that much. I mean, like, like this, like that, like that, oh, like that, like that. About that far. When Stephen stabbed her, tell me again where he stabbed her. Like right here. How far into the knife go? Again, with your hands, if you can. Oh, like that. Okay. And then he, tell me how he choked her. Where was he when he choked her? On the side of the bed. On the side of the bed? With your hands, show me what, pretend that her neck is there or whatever. Show me how he did it. Like this. How long? Oh, two, three minutes. He must have had a lot of blood on his hands then, huh? How did he get that off his hands? Washing it off. Where? In the sink. Which sink? In the bathroom. Did he wipe any blood up with anything? Just that paper towel that he dried his hands with. After you cut her throat, was she still alive? Barely. And how do you know that? Because she was breathing like a little bit. When do you think she quit breathing? When we were bringing her outside. Outside? What do you mean outside where? Out in the garage. How do you know she quit breathing then? Because her belly wasn't moving. Because her belly wasn't moving? Okay. You talked about getting a car seat in a cabinet. Whose idea was that? His. When you went and got it and put it by the fire, did you throw it on the fire when it was time to throw it on the fire? Mm-hmm. With he, he help. Pardon? He helped me throw it on there. The car seat? Mm-hmm. Who threw the cabinet on the fire? He did. Did you throw anything on the fire? Just that wood that we found. In the, in the um, salvage yard there is a skidster. You know what that is? Uh, it's a flat car. Not the crusher, but a oh. skidster. It's a, it's like a little tractor thing that has a bucket or forks on the front of it. Oh, yeah. You know, what that, you know what that is? Yeah. Did you guys or Stephen use that at all? Uh-uh. Did Stephen use that to uh, dig his fire pit? Do you know? No, I don't know that. I got a hard... Oh, go ahead. Okay. Did you go up north with everybody after you guys couldn't come back to your house? Uh-huh. Did you and Steve talk about this up north? Mm-hmm. You sure? Yeah. How was Steven acting when you got up north? Like he was trying to run away, trying to, trying to figure out when, how to get away from the cops. Did he ever ask you to go with him? No. Did he ever make any threats to you? No. Did he tell you anything about this as far as... What did he tell you after this? He didn't tell me nothing. He was just trying to leave. And Grandpa said that if you're you're going to try to leave, then it means you did it. So he sat back down. Anyone else in the family up north say anything to him like that or about that type of stuff? Uh-uh. 
you said um, I, I've got some tough questions for you okay uh, but just to be honest I need you to to the best of your memory describe Teresa's body to me Like before we put her in there, in the fire? Yes. Like, when she was alive. Did she have any scars, marks, tattoos, stuff like that that you can remember? I don't remember any tattoos. Any scars you remember? Not that I've seen. Did she have pubic hair? Yeah. Do you remember what color her hair was? Brown. Do you remember her breasts? Were they, were they, did she have big breasts, small breasts? Medium. Medium, anything peculiar about her breasts? No. Do you uh, remember what color eyes she had or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Any piercings, any jewelry on her? No. Do you remember any jewelry, earrings, anything like that? No. Watch? had a, a tattoo on her stomach. Do you remember that? Uh-uh. Do you disagree with me when I say that? No, but I don't know what it was. Okay. Had you ever seen Teresa before that day? Uh-uh. I just got my ending, which is probably maybe similar. I don't probably. Know. Um, Brendan, how do you feel about this now? Really sad. Tell me why you feel really sad. That I helped them and I shouldn't go and Sorry for her family that she lost her daughter. How does Steven feel about this after? Do you know? Mm -hmm. If you could change things, what would you change? I would have probably tried to stop them. Stephen, or Stephen, Brendan, look at me. Well, why did you do this? Why did you do your part of it? I don't know. Giving you an opportunity to tell me why you did this. for this? I wanted to see how it felt. See how what felt? Sex. During this whole thing, did you ever think about trying to stop Steven? Yeah. Why didn't you? I thought he would try to, like, try to kill me. 
Mark just asked you a little while ago if he ever threatened you. Now, earlier you had said Monday you talked about something like that, and now you said no. What's the truth? He didn't threaten me. I just thought that he was, he could have, uh, because he's bigger than me, that he could probably beat me up in that. So are you telling us now that he never threatened you? No. And are you admitting to us that you had told us that Monday? Yeah. But now you're saying that didn't happen. Did Steve say anything else to you, offer you anything for doing this or keeping your mouth shut or anything like that? No. Did he tell you anything about saying anything about this to anyone? He just let you go into the, the bed that night and didn't say anything to you, like, about this? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think about calling the police? Sometime. Yeah? Do you ever think about us coming over to talk with you? Did you worry about that at all? Yeah. I was scared the first time I had to go up, when I was up north talking to people. Mm -hmm. I was sweating a lot. Had Steven told you some things to tell, to say to the police? He just told me not to say anything at all. Because his lawyer said not to say anything. If Steven tells us that you did all of this, it was you that started it and, and that killed her and stuff, is that true? No. Don't forget your Pepsi down there. We're going to step out for a couple more minutes, okay? Do you need to use the restroom? Mm -mm. Do you want something to eat? It don't matter. How about it a looks sandwich? Like a little hungry. Should we get you a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. Brendan Ray Dassey was sentenced to life in prison with eligibility for parole in 2048. He was incarcerated at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin, where he remains to this day.